Okay, our next uh, review is going to be the Battle Magic uh, Path of Light. I'm here with my buddy Waldorf. <laughs> yep. Um, and I'm Statler, and we're going to cover each spell and give it a final opinions. Okay, let's start with the lore attribute, which is Guardian of Light. Sorry, Guardian Light. No of in of. there. <laughs> the uh, range is 48. It's an augment. Last one turn. Target gains plus one leadership. No model can be affected by this spell more than once per magic phase. Um, I think anytime you can give a uh, a leadership boost is it's helpful. It's it's a nice you know solid uh, uh, lore attribute, particularly for lower um, uh, leadership <laughs> armies. Doesn't really help elves that much probably. But no. <laughs> but I'm looking at this, and the one thing that really stands out immediately is that 48 inch range yes. on the augment. No, it's quite far. Yes. I don't know that any other one has. None of the ones we've looked at so far, at least, have, have that. Right. So I mean, you're never going to have a problem finding a target mm -hmm. for it. Oh, absolutely. And at 48 inches, you can grab a unit. You know, a chaff unit with yeah. low leadership that's, that's way true. out of your bubble. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, it's got plus one, and it's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really solid lore attribute. Yeah. Plus one leadership is not a game breaker, but it's definitely a hell. It's a bonus, right? Yeah, yeah, it could be the difference. Um, <clears throat> the default spell in this one is the Burning Brightness. Cast on a five up, boost to a fourteen. Range is twenty four, goes up to a forty eight. It's a hex magic. It's a missile damage instant target suffers d6 strength 4 the boosted version is d6 strength 6 hits with flaming attacks against units with the undead or otherworldly rules target suffers 2d6 with the same rules instead right so the old um whatever it was before um forget what the old spell remember. was called anyway um no, it wasn't Shims. It was the other one. It was Shims. It was Shims. Shims so Burning Gaze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the five, casting on a five is fantastic for a spell that does Fantas D6 Strength 4. Fantastic. I mean, you can one dice it and have a decent shot at getting it off. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything but a one or, well, yeah, if you're a plus two, like kind of where it's our standard. Basically, yeah. Then the three up, it's going to cast. Exactly. That's pretty awesome. Um for a range 24 magic missile that does d6 yeah, strength you can, 4. You can one dice it and, and on two thirds of time you're going to get it. Yeah. Um, I like it. Um, I, the boosted version is kind of rough at a 14. Yeah. But if you need it, if you need those strength 6, I don't think I would ever do it for d6 strength 6. No, no. But if you're fighting uh, undead or otherworldly, which are the demon stuff. 2d6 strength 6 is, well, otherworldly is all over the place now. So That's true. You know. The, uh, primarily, it's the demons. But it's primarily but it's other, demons. Other but stuff. Wood elves have it. And, uh, oh, wood elves yeah. have it more. Yeah, all of the uh, dryads. Okay. And, you know, all the stuff like that. And uh, um, so yeah, pretty much uh, like yeah. Green Knight. You know, right. and Equitane. And, oh, so they take two d six strength six at a at a four casting of fourteen, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's five dice. <laughs> but it's five dice. Yeah, you might. You need to. I think you really want that target if you're if you're gonna cast a boosted right. version. But the base version is. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Okay. Uh, next one, Shield of Protection, uh, base cast of 7, uh, boosted version of 10, range of 24. Uh, boosted version is 6, but it's an aura, so everything within 6. Um, it's an augment, uh, last one turn. Target gains distracting and hard target. Shooting attacks targeting the unit that do not roll the hit, rolling ballistic skill, using ballistic skill, have to roll a 4 up or the shot is lost. Um, the uh, seven's a decent casting value for the base one. Uh, the aura ten is actually not not a bad casting. Um, the six is a little tight, so your mm -hmm. mage just kind of has to be in the middle of everything. Yeah, you'll probably catch three units maybe at yeah. best. Yeah. The um, and uh, the distracting and hard target those are those are nice boosts. I mean, one's a minus one to hit and shooting. The other one's uh, minus one to hit in, in melee. Right. Um, and that like. There's, there's a lot being thrown in this spell, uh, yeah. so it's it helps you both in the shooting phase and in, in the close combat phase. And once again, the uh, the anti-war machine, which I, it could be helpful if you're fighting as like a, a dwarf gunline, I suppose. You know. For, well, you just you reduce what it can shoot at. Correct. More than anything, I mean. Yes. You'll just pick a target outside. Oh, absolutely. The bubble, but, but that's that's the helpful thing. But it is, is helpful. You know, well, it depends how bad he really wants to get the target. You know? Right. Yeah, you might risk it if. 
Right. That's yeah, this is going to slam them. Fos, this was the old FOS protection, yes. except they toned down the bubble version. Yes, which it's is six now. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, that's a, it's a nice spell. Yeah, it's, it's it's a nice spell, and at a seven, I think it's uh, it's a very helpful spell. Right. Uh, let's see, the boosted one. I think about that one probably just uh, because of the limited range and where my ma mage is. But the mm -hmm. the base one, I think, is 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 very nice. It's going to help you in, in a lot of situations. Uh, spell two is the Flash of Resolve, another low casting, seven up. Range is 24, it's an augment. Last one turn. If the target is not engaged in combat and is not fleeing, it may instantly perform a reform. If the target is engaged in combat, it may perform a combat reform. And the target receives a plus two bonus to its side's combat score. I can tell you... <laughs> I lost a game to the spell. Yes. Um, as the guy, I thought I had a guy flanked and he turned around and crushed me. Um, and due to that, I have a bad memory about this spell, but it's a good, <laughs> I kind of overrate it probably because of that. It's a really good spell. I mean, it's in a bad a certain... thing if you crush somebody in the flank and all of a sudden you're facing their front. Yeah. If and, you they're, can... and they're armed with like a whole bunch of ranks of attacks. And they're better than you and they destroy <laughs> yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. I'm well aware of that possibility. Um, I like it. It's a very good spell in situations, but it's a situational spell. It's a strictly sp situational spell. I guess the big reforming combat, if you get hit in the flank, I guess this can get you to reform when you normally couldn't. You get hit in the flank, you you can't re you, whatever you fluff your roll you can't reform to face the guy mm -hmm. so now your characters are still hanging out i guess you can well i mean this is but i mean basically this is he's charged it's now the magic phase so it'll give you know yeah he charges you know you charge yeah right anyway so um, basically it's something you're gonna have to, if you think you're gonna get charged in the flank you're gonna have to have this thing up no, you got to wait and survive a round and deal turn, with it. Right. No, I'm saying you'd have to have it up already in turn, yeah, or you have to survive a round to right. hoping your stead, that your steadfast is going to carry you if it's that kind of unit, and then you'll be able to turn. But yeah. Yeah, in my case, I had hit a unit, overran into a flank of another unit, unit right. and th thought, oh, great, I've got this game won. Yes. And the guys turned around and killed me. So. Yeah. And that's the thing, and you have that follow one melee. That's true. Yeah. From pursuing. the uh, But the plus yeah. two combat res is, is a, frankly, is a nice thing all by itself. It is. For a seven, for a two dice spell. That's true. You know, I, I think mean, that all by itself, point. I think it's a nice little bonus. The other two, you know, that you're uh, you're doing the reform is, the two, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the you, reform, well, it's a reform the, one way or another. Right, or the combat reform. Those right. those are those are helpful, and frankly, sometimes moving, that like, like can be a bonus. That's going to come through really well on this recording. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay. I think, I think someone's already calling us about our bad review. <laughs> <laughs> there, there goes our first criticism. <laughs> All right. That's the Flash of Resolve. Um, again, conditional for me. Next one is a spell three, which is the Blinding Speed. This one casts on an eight, a boost to a 12. Range is 24. Uh, the boosted version is a 12-inch aura. It's an augment. Lasts a full turn. The target gains plus three weapon skill and plus three initiative. Oh, this is the replacement for the old one that gave you a weapon skill initiative 10. Speed of light. Speed of light. Thank yeah. you. Um, at an eight, to get plus three weapon skill and plus three initiative is good. Um, especially the bubble is a 12, so maybe three dice. That's a stretch. Yeah. You're um, put four in it. But you're probably going to put four. Plus three weapon skill, plus three initiative. Initiative's still pretty big, uh, especially on, like I said. Uh, initiative might be actually bigger, I think, in Ninth Age than it was in Eighth. Could be. Yeah. Um, I like the spell. It's nice. The casting's relatively low on the, for the Eight one. for the base. You're only going to affect one unit, but you're giving him plus three weapon skill. It's not the bad thing it used to be, where it was pretty much booth making everyone need a five to hit you because it was boosting you up to more than double them right well but now in general for elite armies it's, it's for, probably going to do that for elite armies you know, it's probably going to do the same elves, thing it's probably going to do that but it's no longer making goblins no. 
you know, needed needed, needed to be hit on fives. But right. it's a nice spell. And the plus three initiative that can make a big difference now. Yes, because uh, now you're killing things before they, you know. Exactly, yeah. you know, and uh, say you get a cavalry charge and you've got spears and they happen to be striking before you, you get that, you want to get that attack off. Or other way around, you're running into a whole bunch of spears with your cavalry and you don't want them striking ahead of you and killing all your guys with their killing blows. Before you go. Or at least you want to limit that. And so it's it's a nice right. it's a nice spell. I mean, you're probably not, for that. you're probably not, it's probably not going to matter except for the fact it gets your attacks in. Correct. Before so you take before the you die, so it's just going to give you more attacks. <laughs> yes. you know, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Net of Light, number four spell, base casting value of nine, the boosted value of 12, range is 24, boosted value is 48, it's a hex, last one turn. <clears throat> this one's a bit uh, convoluted. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of each phase, uh, roll a d6. On a five, the target cannot perform one of the following actions. So during the movement phase, if it declare charges, on the magic phase it's casting spells, and the shooting phase it's shooting. Uh, imagine that. And on combat yeah. phase it's pursue and overrun. Okay. Um, I'm. I don't like the variability. Yeah. It's kind of, to me, as if they're casting it against me, I, I may want to start because I'm I'm more worried about what it could do again than what it's going to do. Yeah. It's and, a it's a nine up for a one third chance of doing something of doing one of these things and you, and you might get all of them you might get none of them and quite often it's usually one specific thing you don't want to have happen right you yeah. don't want that mage casting or you don't want that charge to clear and again you're throwing a three dice three dice at a thing that gives you a, what a third chance of stopping the bad thing from happening exactly yeah so yeah I'm I, I actually don't like this spell <laughs> <laughs> no I'm not a big fan either now I guess that gives if you hit a unit that could do all four phases to you, or at least three of those, then maybe, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, it's one of those, if you have it, you'll use it, but it's it's that's not one you can depend on. Do you on a nine up? Yeah. I'm saying if you have it, you may use it because you may not right. have anything else you can cast. Right. It's just relative to that turn. Just to burn the and dice. just for the chance might be you're going to yeah. do it. And then as an opponent, you're just going to decide if it's important enough, you know. Right. Yeah. All right, that brings us to number five, which is the Time Warp. It casts on a 10, boost to a 15. It's a range 12, augment. The boosted version goes to an aura 12, which is big, big aura. Uh, last one turn, target gains plus one attack, divine attacks, and doubles its movement to a maximum of 10. Uh, plus one attack is good. Divine attacks are... Pretty good, conditional, but pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's the re-roll. Right. They have to re-roll their successful wards. Correct. And double movement, which can be good. It's, you know, it's an infantry thing, though, to a maximum of 10. Right. You're not helping anything really fast. Um, casting on a 10, this only does it to one unit. Now that you're casting it, you're, you're already in combat. The guy knows you have it. It's going to give you plus one attack. If you're five wide, you're giving plus five attacks for a cost to hit ten, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, now, I guess Kingdom of Equitain is different. You can't use it. Why? It's not a, this law is not oh, available. Uh, there it. you go. That, yeah. that settles that. Do it with the wizarding hood. Yeah, anyway. That's true. Um, yeah, plus one attack. Like I said, it's probably only helping your front rank, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're in Horde, I suppose, you know. I mean, yeah, if you're in Horde, then you're giving 10 extra attacks. Mm -hmm. Or if they're high-strength attacks. Where they really matter. Yeah. Um, you, get some yeah. you get some Minotaurs. <laughs> Not a big fan of that spell, overall. And the 15 aura is good, but you're five dicing at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not a huge fan of that spell. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's okay. Um, the uh, and if I have you know high strength attacks, I I, I think that you know it, it's kind of worth it. Um, that's kind of I just find it's, it's very situational, so it's okay to me. It's just very situational. The next one is uh, divine banishment. Uh, basic casting is ten, boosted version is thirteen, range twenty four. It's a hexa missile and damage. It's instant. 
Um, target suffers 2d6 strength 4 hits with divine attacks for each other wizard with, with spells from the path of light within 12 inches of the caster. It's plus 1 to wound if it's the base version. It's plus 1 strength if it's the boosted version. Uh, against units with undead or otherworldly special rules, the target suffers 3d6 uh, hits with the same rules uh, instead. Um, it's the old banishment uh, spell. Now it's but now it's divine. <laughs> I yeah, divine banishment. So <laughs> yeah. just plain banishment. Exactly. It's divine. It's just absolutely divine. Uh, <laughs> actually, looking, this is probably my favorite spell in this lore. Then fittingly, it's number six. Mm -hmm. But it's a low, fairly low casting for a number six spell. For an uber spell, it is definitely a low casting. And if you if you have multiple wizards with the same lore. It's plus one to wound. Correct. Doesn't bring the strength up. It's plus one right. to wound. Won't, won't help the armor, but still wounds them. But it wounds a lot. I mean, you got the run against those really tough stuff, and now you're mm -hmm. hammering them, right? Right. Um, I like it. I think, like I said, this is probably my favorite in this lore. Yeah, it's, it's a great spell, particularly if you're playing against uh, evil stuff. You know, undead and other right. demons, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Just the three D. 3d6 uh, I think makes if you're gonna play with the old you know light council the uh, right um, it, it's quite uh, quite potent so um, I think it's a I think it's a solid spell um, I, I do think you probably just end up throwing the extra die to get the strength I mean it depends on your opponent of course if they have good armor saves but right. if they don't you don't need to and you know maybe you yeah can, if you don't need that extra if they don't have good armor then right say that dice that and plus to wound is really big one dice the burning brightness and you know <laughs> so, <laughs> save that extra die for that yeah, one yeah so as a as a as an uber spell i mean it's not as powerful as a lot of the other uber spells um it's not but, but it's only a 10 but it's only a 10 to cast and it is quite good against evil uh evil things so and it's each wizard with spells from the path of light so yeah okay so you take you know level maybe a few level ones or twos to boost it right the uh Nice thing about this lore in general is, um, you know, a good number of the spells are have you know reasonable casting values. Well, the base spells, nothing goes over a ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, I'm, I'm not I'm not enamored with very many of these spells. <laughs> well, it's a lot. Of, some of them are situational, and it also depends on which army you're playing. It's also limited to only a few armies that can use this with Empire and Elves. I'm not sure who else has light. I have to look, but. Uh, the uh, and lizards, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, the Saurian ancients, yes. <laughs> the, Sorry, lizards, yes. And then you have to look at do these individual, you know, buffs are they particularly helpful to those particular armies? You know, so you know, adding initiative to elves is kind of who cares, right? Know? Adding initiative to Saurian ancients or what is a, a different is, story, is, yeah, you know, or good. even to uh, Empire of the Sunstall. So I think it's an I, I think it's an okay lore. Um, I think it's a, a hmm. good lore for a cavalry army. Um, the uh, so that's really back to uh, EOS, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm lukewarm on it to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm overall. I overall I've got to give it a thumbs down, right? Yeah, I I, I, think, I, so. I think. Yeah. Compared to what other options are, I, I probably I give this one a thumbs down. Yeah, looking through there, like I said, there's too many, too many conditional spells. The Shield of Protection is a good spell. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good spell. The Lore Attribute is a, a decent attribute. It's a decent attribute. And the base spell is good for a magic missile. It's definitely a lore where you have to really think about your build and does it synergize with your specific build. You need to build around it. Right. You know, it's not it's not an all comers lore. No, I think you're correct. The divine banishment though does give you that chance. Mm -hmm. When you run against the you know, the big demon guy or right. whatever, you can but deal with him. But if you're not playing against the big demon guy. But if you, exactly. It's, it's still a nice thing, but you're putting a lot of points in all those mages. They're not cheap. If you're going to run the, the light council, light council, which yeah. you need to to get the strength up, so yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go with a thumbs down. Yeah, I think I'm going to also. All right, there we are. <laughs>